everyone! Welcome back to my channel and welcome to all new viewers. My name is Olka and I'm a UK-based vet and today I'd like to help you decide whether getting your dog castrated is a good idea. Before I get to it, please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell if you enjoy my content. I aim to release a video every week. Let me insert a little disclaimer here. Some of the things I will be talking about are information based on research, studies, books, some my personal opinions. Ultimately, I think you and your dog will benefit most from a direct conversation and examination conducted by your vet, as every patient should be approached on a case-by-case -case basis. Firstly, what does castration actually mean? Ah, this term seems to mean different things in the mouths of different people, even among vets, respectable studies, dictionaries and various books. But, in general, it means a removal or destruction of the testicles or ovaries using radiation, surgery or drugs. However, it became commonplace to use the term castration only for males in everyday life in veterinary practices or among owners. So, further on, I will be using this term to speak about the male dog. Furthermore, most people think about castration as a surgical procedure in which testicles are removed but castration could also be chemical. This is where you use medications to reduce production of certain hormones which prevent, prevent spermatogenesis, or in other words, a development of mature sperm cells. The simplest and easiest way to explain the benefits and risks of castration will be creating a pros and cons list. However, behavioral consequences I will discuss last as it's the most controversial and most difficult to simply divide into pros and cons. Okay, let's dive in and start with pros. By performing surgical castration, both testicles are removed. Thus, it prevents testicular neoplasia. Some people get confused by the word neoplasia. The word cancer is often confused with neoplasia, but only malignant neoplasms are truly cancers. So as to reassure you, since castration prevents testicular neoplasia, by logic it prevents testicular cancer too. Sounds pretty straightforward, doesn't it? If your dog doesn't have testicles in the first place, there is nothing left there to be affected by this disease. The most common disease of the canine prostate is benign prostatic hyperplasia. This is a non-cancerous enlargement of the prostate. Some dogs don't experience any pain or symptoms at all. Other dogs present obvious symptoms, including pain during urination or defecation, pain while walking, constipation, ribbon-like stools, blood in urine and experience severe pain. A few studies showed that the incidence of this disorder increases with age, from 15 to 40% of dogs under seven years of age to 60 to 100% for dogs over seven years of age. This disease affecting prostate is rare in neutered dogs, so castration reduces the risk of it significantly. Neutering is likely to be protective for perineal hernias. What exactly is it? Perineal hernia happens when the weakness in the muscles that make up the pelvic floor allow some of the pelvic contents to poke through and protrude into the perineal area, which is an area between the anus and the scrotum. In one study, 93% of the cases were entire males, which means dogs that weren't castrated. And association with prostatic disease and prostatic hormones is suspected. Castration prevents unwanted pregnancies. This is a fairly obvious one, I suppose, and I hope most of us know why this happens. Surgical castration means no testicles. No testicles, no sperm cells. No sperm cells means no babies. Simple as that. Perianal adenomas tend to occur much more frequently in intact or entire male dogs. These are common tumors of perianal glands, which are modified sebaceous glands surrounding anus. Castration alone will lead to regression of majority of them. Perianal fistulas, also known as anal furunculosis, is an immune-mediated disease seen most commonly in German Shepherds and Irish Setters, and rarely in other breeds. It occurs predominantly in entire male dogs. 
which suggests a hormonal influence, though a specific connection has not been identified. In one study, intact dogs were 86% of the affected patients. Anal furunculosis is a chronic inflammation and ulceration of the tissues surrounding your dog's anus. The condition is intensely painful. Straining and crying when passing stool and persistent leaking of the area are the most commonly reported concerns. Some dogs become very frustrated when they are in the close proximity of female dogs in heat, whereas others don't even seem that bothered by it. Some of these frustrated dogs can have extreme responses. This is not good for them mentally or physically. Castration should be considered in dogs such as these unless you can separate them from the female dogs. Okay, cons. First con I'd like to mention are potential complications during surgery. Dog castration is a fairly simple procedure in comparison to some more sophisticated surgeries that are often performed in an average veterinary surgery. And routine castrations are definitely less tricky than routine bitch space, for example. However, you can never rule out possible complications despite the risk being very low. A study from 2017 showed that perioperative mortality in nearly 114,000 dogs and cats in a high volume spay castration clinic was 0.03% surgeries. Quite low. Mortality was more than twice as high for female as for male dogs and cats. Perioperative basically means a situation occurring as or around the time of an operation. As for potential post-surgical complications, these include a breakdown of a stitched up surgical wound, scrotal hematoma, bruising, hemorrhage or infection. I can't tell you the exact statistics regarding the frequency of them occurring, but from my experience, major problems happen rarely mild bruising possibly more often. However, if your dog is allowed to lick the wound, breakdown of the wound and following infection is far more likely. So, if he is interested in that area, he will need a cone of shame, as not to nibble at it. There is one prostatic disease which is not prevented by castration. Prostatic carcinoma, or to put it simply, prostate cancer. It is rare in dogs. It is thought to occur in less than 1% of dogs. A study carried out in 2002 showed that castration does not cause prostate cancer, but it may favor tumor progression. Therefore, this disease is more commonly seen in castrated dogs than in entire dogs. The risk is still, however, very low. Interestingly, a more recent study from 2019 claims there is currently not enough evidence supporting an increased risk of developing prostatic cancer after castration, and these scientists think more research is needed on this topic. With regard to cancers, some studies on osteosarcoma in several breeds found an increase in occurrence in neutered dogs relative to entire dogs. Osteosarcoma is a malignant tumor of the bone, and it is the most common bone tumor found in dogs. It mostly affects the limbs, but it can also develop in the skull, spine, and the ribs. Castration unfortunately increases the risk of obesity in your dog. There are a few factors which may play a role in this. One would be decreased demand for energy. Castrated dogs don't need to consume as many calories as entire dogs. Both the owner and the dog are already used to a certain volume of food given on a daily basis and fail to adjust it after the neutering operation. On top of this, castrated dogs have a decreased metabolism. This means that the calories they consume are converted to energy more slowly. Reduction in levels of testosterone can also result in a reduced urge to roam around in search of a female partner, which could potentially decrease the amount of physical activity. However, if your dog likes to play and chase a ball, I don't think that this necessarily has to be an issue. Then you've got the obvious. You need to fork out some money to pay for the procedure. It isn't normally a shocking amount, but of course, it depends on your individual circumstances. 
It will also vary from one country to another and between individual veterinary practices. You will need to sacrifice a little bit of your time to take your pet to the vets, pick him up and then normally monitor closely for the next few days and likely take it to a couple of post-operation check appointments. It might be a bigger problem for some than others if a dog is an anxious one and doesn't like to be in a strange, unfamiliar surroundings or be handled by people they don't know. It might simply stress them out. Studies show that early castration affects bone growth plates, delaying its closure and causing dogs to grow taller than they should. This can predispose the dog to later joint problems. Orthopedic conditions associated with neutering include hip dysplasia, cruciate ligament injury and slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Okay, so the most controversial part of this discussion is behavioral implications. There have been many studies conducted, but the results aren't quite conclusive. Most studies showed that castration reduces urine marking, mounting and roaming. But what about aggression? The biological and environmental influences on the animal behavior are complex and difficult to unravel. Most studies have found intact male dogs to be disproportionately involved in aggressive behavior. Though neutering has generally been associated with a decreased incidence of some kinds of aggression, there is also limited evidence that it might be associated with an increase in some other aggressive behaviors. One survey of Springer Spaniel owners identified more owner-directed aggression reported in dogs that were neutered than in intact dogs. Some believe that the increase in some aggressive behaviors post-castration is related to reduction in testosterone and that low levels of it are responsible for lack of confidence in a dog, which in effect leads to fear aggression. When preparing this video, I read a dozen of articles and studies related to effects of castration on aggression and behavior. And now, honestly, I'm more lost than ever regarding this issue. Ultimately, I think it's something which is extremely difficult to measure objectively, as there are so many other factors which come into play. My own personal and subjective experience indicates that entire dogs tend to be more hyper and lively. However, that's not the case in 100% of cases. As for aggression, I don't think I noticed really I don't think I noticed, let's put it simply, being attacked or growled at more by dogs with balls or without them. Overall, if you are worried about the fact your dog is aggressive and want to fix it, getting it castrated wouldn't be the first thing I'd go for. Overall, if you are worried about the fact your dog is aggressive and want to fix it, getting it castrated wouldn't be the first thing I'd go for. Firstly, I would seek help and advice from a properly trained canine behaviorist. Try and identify the source of that aggression and fix it with, well, therapy and training. If this doesn't work, with guidance of your vet and the behaviorist you've been working with, castration could be the next thing to consider depending on your individual situation. There's absolutely no guarantee it will work though. To summarize, castration has certain advantages and disadvantages. I think making a decision whether to get your dog neutered should be approached on a case-by-case -case basis. You can definitely discuss this further with your vet. Our knowledge on impact of castration gets constantly updated and we don't have all the answers. Some people, including vets and dog owners, have very strong opinions on the matter, whether it's for or against routine castration. I believe open dialogue and understanding of why we do it in the first place is essential. And lastly, thank you for watching. I hope you liked my video. Like, subscribe, and I hope I see you here again soon. Bye!